Hello everyone, Russell Wright from Network Empire and G++.com and I promised a quick video to cover the difference between the status update on Google Plus and the what we call the plus ones. Now we call this deep plus okay, versus shallow plus. And that's our own internal idiosyncrasy to help us distinguish the difference between the two, which 90% of the people that we know uh, don't understand this difference. And we use these two things in really particular ways. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it. The easiest way to think in terms of a deep plus is that, or just simply post, is that it appears on your timeline here. Okay, and generally speaking, you're going to want to put a status update along with that post. Now, if you're auto blogging uh, using uh, a special plugin that we have joint ventured with, uh, then you're going to not need to be writing a status update because it will publish your blog posts every time you update one directly to your timeline using a special blog plugin. The difference is that a status update is something that's seen by all of your friends and it appears in a timeline. In fact, if you go to your, let me just go to the general timeline for my Russell Wright Google Plus account. There's something just flashed in. See that? These will flash in throughout the day. This is just like a Facebook timeline or anything else. Hopefully, all of you are familiar. See how they're all mixed in? These are people that are a part of my. Um, these are people that are a part of my service, and I actually see a post right here that I'm actually interested in because it falls into my niche. Now I just gave traffic to Steve Blank because he was shared with somebody because he had an interesting headline. And I've taught a lot of you how to use the headline as the main way to get people to your post. You can see here that Seb made a status update, but he also then published directly a post from somebody else. This is how you get traffic off of your G Plus account. Okay, So this is the general timeline. When you click on your own view profile, you're going to see only your posts. These are the, the things that I've published over the last few weeks. And I really am a fan of publishing open graph images as well as uh, videos off of your timeline. Okay, because it just gets more traffic. You definitely want to have an image tied to your timeline, okay? And that's become more and more difficult to not do, to not have an image. And we're going to talk about how to properly format that. It's really important that you know how that's done. Okay, but what is, so that's the regular posts, the status update, but what is a shallow plus? That's a deep plus. What do you call a shallow plus? Shallow plus is just this little bookmark thing that you know you're not going to see these green checks because this is part of my McAfee software. I should probably turn that off for the video, but hopefully you know that. You can see that these are just um, bookmarks that I've created over the last few months. Now, people use these for all kinds of ways uh, and all kinds of reasons. If you look at other people's plus ones, depending upon how they've got their security set, most people have their security set so you cannot see their plus one, what they've been liking, what they've been bookmarking. Other people do have that open. Okay, but you'll find people, other plus ones, have a whole bunch of other people's stuff. They're plusing. If they like something, they'll plus it. And that's how Google wants you to use it. That's not the way that I teach our students to use it in the one feed to rule them all system. Let me just go here and talk about that for a second. And within what we call the content curation course, I launched a course at curationprofits.com called Premium Micro Content Curation, where I teach people only to plus their own stuff with their primary account. That's because I'm having you turn this into a feed. And that's really what we're talking about, the difference between uh, the two feeds that you can generate using our g-plusplus.com software. Okay, we you have the option of generating the shallow plus feed in this column. Okay, the deep plus is the status update that everybody knows and loves that I just showed you with the images. It's coming down your news feed, but the shallow plus is to me the ultimate content curation function because if I hire an outsource staff of people, and let's say my outsource staff um, has a map of my entire network. Let's say I have five outsourcers or even 500 outsourcers and they all have their own Google Plus account okay and if that were the case if they all have their own Google Plus account attached attached to their own Google dashboard and they have their own about us page all the things that I teach you in the advanced techniques what they can do is you can actually assign them the task of going to all of your various 
platforms, your WRS1s, your WR1s, your money sites, um, all of your Scoopit articles, your Twilas, your uh, regular blogs, which are not listed here. And then you can, what happens is they can start plus oneing all those various things in your network, and then they're going to develop a very long list of bookmarks in here. Now, what we're doing that's different is that in the Google Plus area, we're turning all that into a feed right here, just those bookmarks. And no, there's no other way to do that. We're the, currently the only application on the market that does that. And I did that for a very specific reason because it's super technical. But what happens if you have several outsourcers or one outsourcer or even yourself, if you're a one-man band, and you start plussing your own things, like just imagine yourself sitting there watching TV with your laptop and doing nothing. You can be helping your empire just by while you're watching a movie or something, okay? You know, and what happens is that, that gets turned into a feed. Instead of these, just, these bookmarks in the shallow plus just sitting here wasting away, Okay, and you know, only to be used for what you what Google intended, which was to keep track of all the interesting and cool articles that you found during the week. And if you need to go back two weeks, you can find where you bookmarked it. That's about the only purpose. Or if you want to share your plus ones with your network, they might be able to see what types of things Russell Wright pluses. Okay. So instead of that, you can take the feed that's generated and put it out to all the feed directories feedage, syndicate, and we show you inside the g-plus-plus.com course precisely how to syndicate that stuff. And you can even leave it in Pingler so they're constantly getting pinged, but more import importantly, they continue to grow and you can feed splice them with other uh, services and do see our other videos precisely on how to do that. And what you've got is you've got both of those technologies, okay, both your deep plus and your shallow plus going out to the directories and oftentimes getting real human traffic. And it's crazy stuff, it's such an easy thing to do, but because a lot of people don't have this particular software, I actually had to design this, and you guys have been waiting for a while, but we had to design this, Sue, myself, Sue and myself. And now it makes it easy to do that, so that you can even do that with your auto blogs. I've got hundreds of auto blogs that are automatically posting, but are automatically reposting. And you could even create it, I haven't done this yet, but you could even create an automatic system if you wanted to, like a macro, to plus one your entire network completely. But this is, you know, we're not going to give away more than we've shown you right here. But this is an amazing software technique because you can just RSS syndicate everywhere and you do start seeing your traffic go. To make matters more interesting, you can also syndicate things to your Facebook page. Okay, it's, to me, I find that very amusing. It's kind of a, an inside joke because you know, more or less, let me just go ahead and go somewhere here, more or less Facebook and G Plus are um, nemesis. Here's an example of a 100% automated Facebook fan page. And you can see here that this is my persona, Cody Wright, publishing to this, okay? And this is a, an automate, not only have I published to G Plus automatically using a plugin that I reveal inside the course, but I've also got the pluses going right into Facebook. So it's almost like, you know, you're taking two nemesis and mating them together. I, I find it very amusing. Because here's the irony, okay? <laughs> Even though Google doesn't get along well with Facebook in many ways, they give you extra credit for uh, traffic coming from Facebook. So if somebody, I have live followers on this page. Somebody clicks to a Google Plus account, which I like to mix in. It's gonna take, take it here. Okay, what happens is Google Plus, if somebody clicks through from a Google Plus page and end up going to your blog from Google Plus, there's two things going on. Google is seeing that Facebook traffic is being driven to your Google Plus account, which they give you credit for. And then on top of that, they give you credit for the Google Plus uh, social media because remember, Google likes platforms that are their own. So you've just killed two birds with one stone. You've gotten traffic from Facebook, real live followers, to your Google Plus, Plus status update, which gives you social ranking. You have the opportunity of getting plussed, okay, by real people here. This is, this is only me, so this is a fake plus, but. And then you also get the ranking factor inside Google Analytics. So it's kind of a, actually a trifecta <laughs> of powerful things. Now, when you have videos going through this, it's very powerful, okay? On top of that, when they go to this, page, there's a YouTube video here, which also you get credit for, depending upon how you have it set up, okay? 
So this is why I'm teaching you, if you choose, you do not have to generate a SHA plus, but this is one of the reasons that I'm teaching you to generate to only plus yourself when it comes to WR1 web rings. Don't plus other people's stuff. Okay, plus yourself and then syndicate that to your various services. Now, keep in mind that I'm oversimplifying this. You don't want to take WR2 web rings and WR2 Google Plus accounts and thread them through a WR1 fan page. This is why I have to teach you advanced techniques in an upcoming course that I have coming in December called uh, Pin Vid Automation Websites. It really is one of, one of the favorite courses that I've put together in the last five years because I'm getting such a tsunami of traffic by doing this. So I'm oversimplifying here, but hopefully you can understand that by generating an RSS feed, both out of your status updates and your shallow pluses, you're able to add to your bookmark bookmarks and give your outsourcing team a very powerful bookmarking system that honestly Google has taken away. When I say they take it away, what I mean is last year, and many of you have taken my course recognize this, Google removed the plus one RSS feed, the mail end, out of the Google Reader. And when they removed that, it forced my hand to have to build this software because it's kind of like removing your mojo, so to speak. I'm using my language carefully here. Because whenever you give somebody a feed, you're giving them a lot of power to syndicate. Okay, this is why Google Plus does not have a feed. You've got to go create one. There's a bookmark, there's a Chrome plugin that creates a feed, but it's terrible. It doesn't work properly, and you certainly can't use it for um, stable marketing promotion. So let's talk about the Shallow Plus and the D Plus. How do you create a Shallow Plus? Well, let me give you an example. Let's go somewhere. Um, let me see here. I'm trying to give you an example. Let's go to Scoop It, and let's look at a random post, okay, and let's go to Core Inception Software and Techniques. It takes me to a video. This video has only been viewed 600 times, but it's an old video. My favorite methodology is a bookmarklet that I have. See up here in this left-hand corner? It makes things very clear about shallow versus deep plussing. You can just drag this bookmarklet into your browser. Go ahead and do a search on bookmarklets and look at the pros and cons. I will also share the bookmarklet that I am currently using. Okay, and it seems to be working pretty well. So if I just click this bookmarklet, what it's going to do, it's going to open Google Plus in the upper left-hand corner of my screen. And it's going to give me an option. You can see that I've already got it shared at one point, so I may not be able to use this video. But you can share it. You can D plus or shallow plus with these types of services. A shallow plus is just simply all you do is click the button. Okay, that's showing the zero now, so I may not be able to bookmark this. Let me find something that I. Another thing that I want you to know is you can only shallow plus something once. So let me re plus that. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. Let me find a, a unique video. Let's go ahead and go further down. Let's go to Storify. Chrome extensions tips. Hopefully, oh, actually, I don't know if you can um, plus Storify. Let me just double check that. Let's go ahead and. Let's go look at the direct, I'm going to try to keep this super simple for you, I don't want to complicate this at all. Let's take a look at, um, got a lot of Storify things. Storify is a different topic, so I don't want you to be confused. Let's go ahead and, let's go to something that matters, like a sales page. Okay, let me try shallow plusing this sales page as an example because I don't know that I've ever done it. So I click the bookmarklet in this upper hand corner and it's going to appear in this right hand corner in the bookmarklet method. Just go ahead and click it. Okay, It has never been shared because I didn't do any promotions for it. You can see that because it simply says zero right here. Just click it Okay, and I'm not going to do anything else. It's that first click that added it to my bookmark. It didn't you didn't, if I had added a status update or done something different like that, it would have um, taken a whole lot more time. If you've got outsourcing staff or you're sitting there watching TV, you don't want all the brain damage of having to write comments and updates, okay? Unless you do, and that's fine. So if I go back to my Google Plus account, you're going to see that if I do a refresh, you're going to see a Google Plus theme domination sign up for Network Empire, okay? Now, had I generated a feed out of that, which I have, using the software that we're giving you access to right here on my Google Plus, this will be updated 
in my Google Plus feed. Now, depending upon which, how I'm using our Google Plus software, how you're using it, if you're using a proxy, that'll update within the hour. It's not instant because of the amount of bandwidth we need in order to do this. If you're using us without bringing a proxy to it and adding it to your proxy system, then it's going to update only every 24 hours. So you will not see that update until tomorrow. This is why I am suggesting that you BYOP, bring your own proxy to the service so that everything updates every hour. But what will happen is this feed will update your Google Plus account, your Google Plus bookmark, okay? Right here, just like this, will generate a feed out of it, and then you'll be able to syndicate that to all of the RSS networks using the methods that we show you inside the members area, including softwares like RSS submit, including using techniques like uh, feed splicing. I show you inside the course at G++ how to use RSS submit and other softwares like that. All you got to do is drop your feed in and it goes everywhere out through the web. Or you can use a fiber gig. Uh, I have several friends on Fiverr that provide for five bucks if you can't afford the $80 software, you can just syndicate everywhere. You can give them a couple of links and they'll syndicate that for you. Okay? So all you would do is you would add your Google Plus One feed. You know, for example, you just go to your software area. You right click on it because you know that that feed is going to update. Copy the link address. Okay, you're going to put it directly in here. Okay, there's the See, it says plus ones. This is how our programmer distinguishes for you the status updates versus the shallow plus, the deep versus shallow plus. Okay, you're going to add. Okay. Okay, and you're going to look at your plus ones. These are the ones that you want. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to remove this. And you can also make, I also show you how to use FeedBlitz to generate a feed like this because FeedBurner for some reason is not allowing Google Plus feeds, hint, hint. To me, that's kind of like saying you're doing something right. Okay, there could be a formatting issue, but we don't think so at this point. I'll let you know. Point is you could use FeedBlitz, but for the purpose of this demonstration, you're just going to select that and you're going to click Submit. Okay, and then it's on its way. What you've just done is you're going out to all the major directories Okay, this is the uh, beginner's level, and there's advanced techniques you can use as well, which we show you, such as feed splicing, video splicing, and so on and so forth. But you've done something that almost nobody on the planet is doing, is you've taken a plus one bookmark service, turned it into a feed, and syndicated it everywhere. You can do that with your outsourcer's feed. If I wanted to, I could have taken all five of our outsource staff's G plus feed, because I want, and I could tell them, hey, I want you to plus 30 uh, articles and blogs and status updates and bookmark uh, sites and social sites per week as part of your outsourcing job task. And at the end of the week, I can have them also syndicate these, or you can have somebody who's watching them, such as a project manager. I could take all f five or 10 or 15 of their plus RSS feeds and syndicate them out. And what you'll happen, you know, what you'll see happening as you're hitting pingbacks and even real human traffic during some of the splicing methods to these Google Plus accounts, which gives the bookmarks just a little bit more kick, gives you a little social status in, um, signal into your Google Analytics account, because Google Plus is definitely part of the network of approved social media systems that Google is creating. It's a force or a kind of a boys club of social media, which we talk about, and it gives you plenty of credit. And you just continue to do this, and these feeds will continue to update, and feed jackers will borrow these feeds and you'll continue to get traffic out of nowhere using a simple uh, additional Google Plus from the Google Plus Plus software system. Hope this makes sense. This has been the hardest thing to, for me to explain to people. If you still have questions, do feel free to contact the help desk and we will continue to answer your questions. Thank you so much. I hope you have a beautiful week and I look forward to seeing you on our various webinars at networkempire.com.